What's good? What's good, my peoples? So, we're back with another mock draft. This is going to be not much different, but this is with all subscribers, actually. Um, all subscribers, or at least people that follow me on Twitter, which I'm assuming are all subscribers, basically. I created a draft on the draft app or draft.com, and I share a link. And I put it on Twitter, and I say, hey, guys, join join my draft you join my draft, you draft with me, and now that we're filled up, we have all 12 people in the draft. We're about to start. I have the fifth pick. If you're not yet signed up for draft, this is a best ball draft. You pick 18 players on your roster, no kickers, no defense. The software automatically starts the best players at each position, and you see the starting positions up here in the top right, quarterback, two running backs, three wide receivers, and a tight end. So you don't actually do any work outside of the original draft. You do the original draft, and then you come back at the end of the season to collect your winnings, which I expect to do a lot of. I've already done about 20 of these drafts this summer, which is crazy, um, probably more than that, honestly. But if you want to do the draft app, this is great practice for your mock drafts because these are all cash leagues, anywhere from a dollar up to, uh, I think, $1,000. So all the ADPs and all the people drafting against you are trying, which means that it's going to be realistic. So I would highly I would highly recommend you guys practice some of these drafts on draft.com or the draft app. Um, use promo code BDGE when you sign up. You will get a free entry into a three dollar um, league. So you'll get a real entry into a real cash money league using promo code BDGE. Okay. So again, we have all subscribers in here. It's kind of funny drafting against subscribers. Uh, so we have Gurley, Le'Veon Bell, David Johnson off the board, which is of no surprise to me. Um, I really hope Zeke falls to me here because Zeke's actually my number two ranked running back. Guys, the thing about Zeke is I, they are telling Zeke that they want to give him 400 carries. I would not be surprised to see him in the range of what they did with DeMarco Murray just a couple of years ago when Murray had, I don't know, what did he have, almost 500 total touches. Um, that's just the way their team is set up right now. So he went with Zeke. So I'm left at the five spot. And a lot of you guys were probably kind of curious about what, you know, what to do after the Big four running backs are off the board, and uh, I don't really think it's actually that difficult. I'll be going with Antonio Brown here, um, just the most consistent fantasy wide receiver over the last five years, six years, possibly ever. I'm not really sure about the history of fantasy football, to be honest with you. I ain't that fucking old. So um, see Saquon go right after Antonio Brown. And what I was saying is it's kind of funny when I draft against my subscribers because, you know, for the most part, a lot of their opinions are shaped by my opinions. Right. Or at least like a, a small portion of their opinion has to come from my opinion. Um, so I'm in, in the middle of my dynasty draft, my subscribers only dynasty draft. So I see a lot of guys that are going off the board earlier than most normal drafts. They would be or guys that are like sleepers, like deep in the draft that normally wouldn't get picked. But they are because it's people that kind of follow me. So um, I don't I mean, I don't have like a different strategy or anything. I just think it's kind of funny when this shit happens. But. Um, we see Brown, Barkley, Kamara, Kareem Hunt, DeAndre Hopkins. I'm cooling on Kareem Hunt. Um, I'm kind of cooling on – I know a lot of my uh, my emphasis early on in this summer was about how I wanted to have one of these workhorse backs, regardless of if I'm skipping over wide receivers, but kind of gaining some momentum or some ground on the fact that I do like a lot of these wide receivers, and I think guys like OBJ and uh, Michael Thomas and Julio are kind of falling at a value here. So um, – and in, in, in their expense are Dalvin Cook and Kareem Hunt are guys that I'm kind of falling back on a little bit. Um, not that I don't love them as as, as running backs or, <clears throat> or don't think that they'll finish as RB1s, but there's a few things that I see that could be um, problems for those two in particular. I still like Melvin Gordon a lot. I still love who else is up here, Kamara and Barkley. But in particular, is Kareem Hunt and Melvin Gordon that kind of scare me a little bit. I think people really think of Kareem Hunt as like, this featured three down back kind of guy. And he did get uh, a big workload in a lot of the games last year. However, he's not like the guy that they send out on two minute drills. He is not their premier pass catching back all the time. He's not always in their pass blocking. Um, and they bring in a few different running backs this off season. They get Spencer Ware back, hopefully um, for their team's sake. But I don't think Kareem Hunt is as much of a featured guy as a lot of people think he is. Um, and that kind of scares me because we did see that big streak of, of really bad games. It was like six in a row, six scoreless games in a row, I think it was. Maybe like five. I'm not really sure. But he had that inconsistent streak last year. 
Um, and that kind of made me scared a little bit. And then Dalvin Cook's kind of unproven, right? We saw his talent in four games, but it was a very small sample size. Um, coming off a serious knee injury, and I believe he had a, an injury in college as well. I'll have to, I'll have to, someone's gonna have to fact check me on that. But he had a serious knee injury last year, right? Tore the ACL, only four games, was very useful. But you have to think that wow, the McKinnon hype is fucking real. This is what happens when I play against people in my uh, in my league, I guess. So we have. Um, I want to talk about Gronk a little bit, but I, th- I think I'm going to take. Still going to go with LaShawn McCoy here. Perfectly fine with LaShawn McCoy here. Um, I know like the storyline is easy to say like, oh, LaShawn McCoy is a bus candidate. But guys, when you're getting my pick 20, you're getting a guy who's been a top 10 running back in fantasy for like seven straight years. I understand the 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 bills are, are going to be bad, bad quarterback, bad offense, bad offensive line. But the volume LaShawn McCoy is going to get is going to be absurd. Like, he's their only weapon on offense. Even if his carry total is down a little bit, he's going to catch a ton of passes. These quarterbacks are going to rely on checkdowns a lot. Um, McCoy at pick 20, I'm absolutely okay with. He's someone that I think the reason people started calling him a bust in the beginning of the year was obviously other than the outlook that he's going to have for the year. But people were assuming that he was going to be a top 10 pick again this year. Um, and if that's your if that's your thought process going into the draft, then yes, you're going to be disappointed with LaShawn McCoy. But if he's going to drop all the way to pick 20, if he's going to be going behind guys like a Jarek McKinnon um, and you're debating between like McCoy and like Doug Baldwin and Joe Mixon and things like that, I think McCoy is an absolutely fine pick here. Oh, we see we see people flying off the board. Um, so we have let me see. And that was it. Yeah, that was at pick 20. This is a 12 man draft. This is half PPR. Everything on, on draft is half PPR. Where am I looking right now? So um, I'm also warming up to the idea of Travis Kelsey as a third round pick. I I wanted to kind of stay away from him, but I like him as a third round pick because of the fact that, you know, the the tight end landscape is not good right now. I think we're actually in kind of in the midst of a renaissance right now. And I think we're going to see over the next like three, two to three years, kind of the changing of the guard here. Um, Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I'm actually kind of growing on Jordan Howard a little bit too. Darius Geis, I like Stefan Diggs a lot. Um, I'm going to go with Kelsey here um, just because I want to kind of get a point across here. So the, the tight end landscape is is bad right now, right? There's only a few guys that you're even comfortable starting. And uh, and there's like an, uh, there's a huge drop-off pretty much too, right? Because Gronk is capable of putting up numbers that no one else is capable of putting up. Um, his touchdown percentage in terms of – touchdowns per game over his career. I know people want to put Travis Kelsey and Zach Ertz near Gronk, but guys, I, I cannot stand this comparison. They're not close to what Gronk is. When Gronk is healthy, and I understand that there's an injury concern there, but when Gronk is healthy, no fantasy tight end is even close to touching Rob Gronkowski. He averages like 0.7 touchdowns a game when you have guys like Kelsey and Ertz career averages at like 0.35. So almost half a touchdown less per game than Gronk has over his career. There's not even a close, it's not even a close tier. And I would also put Travis Kelsey an entire tier above Zach Ertz because he's he's so much more of a playmaker. And I think Travis Kelsey is the guy in this Chiefs offense who's kind of bulletproof no matter what changes they make, especially to the quarterback position. Um, I think Kelsey is going to be a key part, part of this offense. I think Tyreek Hill is the guy who's going to suffer in terms of overall fantasy volume this year. Listen, I love Tyreek Hill. I think I, I was one, I was a guy pushing him last summer. Um, I, I did an entire video on Tyreek Hill and why you shouldn't pass him up last summer. I love him as a player. I think he's incredible. The volume is not going to be there. People, <clears throat> this is the point I, I was arguing with like two guys on Twitter um, last week for a long time about this. Tyreek Hill, here's how I look at it, right? Everyone's super excited about Pat Mahomes and how he's like a, a slinger, right? And he's the deep ball passer and all this stuff. And I absolutely understand that. I get that. It makes sense. But here's the, here's the point. Alex Smith through the fifth most deep passes in the NFL last year. So in a vacuum, yes, Mahomes might be a better slinger and might have more volume than Smith. But even if Mahomes lives up to that hype, he's still not going to – like he would have to do incredible his first year just to hit what Alex Smith hit last year. And Alex Smith was top five into – oh, my God, Rex Burkhead at 4-1. What the fuck is going on here? Rex Burkhead just went before Adam Thielen, 
Fitz, Juju, Sony Michelle. Oh my, what what on earth just happened there? Who is D Andy or Dandy? Dandy, I need you to leave a comment down below. I need you to leave a comment on this video, whoever you are, and explain yourself, bro. Explain yourself, kid. Um, and so I was talking about Alex Smith, fifth in the NFL in quarterbacks in terms of deep attempts, number one in deep ball completion percentage. Do you understand how good Pat Mahomes has to be? They need to give him enough volume just to heat, hit the elite level that Alex Smith was at in terms of attempts. And then if he gets the top five most deep passing attempts in the NFL that Alex Smith had last year, he then needs to be the most efficient, accurate one in the NFL. Like, guys, you don't understand. There's not a lot of room for error there considering how good Smith was last year. I understand he's not as good of a deep passer as Mahomes is in a vacuum, but last year – and these are what these are the numbers that Tariq Hill put up last year with Alex Smith. Mahomes would need to match that. Just put up the same numbers and understand that. Okay, if you think that uh, Tariq Hill is going to have that same appeal, then guess what? Now you just throw – you could you could call it a push, right? But now you just throw Sammy Watkins into the mix. I feel like that. I, like there's no more argument need to be made here. My pick's coming up, so I'm kind of I, – I haven't even seen what the hell has been going on. Um, so Jay, Rex Burkhead, Jay, Jai, Thielen, Cooper, Fitz. I wonder sometimes if my opinion, like, sways the ADP whatsoever. It's just in terms of the fantasy landscape. I don't think I have anywhere near as much push. Ah, there goes my boy Juju. Kind of upset about that. Kenyon Drake's on the board. Derek Henry, Ingram, Sony. Ooh, I like me some Sony. Like Lamar Miller a lot. A Rob. Um... This is four eight. Yeah, I'm gonna go with Sony here. I'm sticking to my guns with Sony, man. I don't care about the reports. I don't. I don't care about nothing, man. So, anyways, I was talking about Travis Kelsey too. The tight ends. I think he's safe there, and I think the landscape is is kind of changing, right? We're seeing these guys like Gronk is probably a year or two away from retirement. Uh, Delaney Walker's on his way out. Kyle Rudolph's getting a little older. Um, we see a lot of like middling tight ends, but I think we're in kind of like a renaissance here, right? With Evan Ingram, who's 23, George Kittle's a rookie or was a rookie last year. Um, Hunter Henry, if he ever comes back, he'll be a stud, right? So I think we're, we're kind of coming around to a younger generation of tight ends who are going to be better pass catchers. Um, but for right now, for this year in redraft, there's not a lot of guys that have anywhere near the ceilings that Kelsey and Gronk have. So I like the idea of getting them. And um, to this point, when you're in smaller leagues, guys, when you're in um, eight-man leagues and even 10-team leagues, you have to realize that, say you're in an eight-man league, right? Everybody's running backs and everybody's wide receivers are going to be very good, right? If they're that small, if the league is that small, everyone's skill position players are going to be very good. So you need to be able to get a positional advantage somewhere, right? Does that make sense? If everyone's running backs are good, if any, everyone's wide receivers are really good, you need to be able to separate yourself somewhere, and this year, I see a big value play in separating yourself via the tight end position. Because like I said, there aren't a lot of guys that can hit the Travis Kelsey, Rob Gronkowski ceiling. And those guys will give you a weekly big advantage here. Um, okay, so yeah, McCoy, Sony Michelle, Antonio Brown. And guys, in these drafts, it's kind of cool because you could just um, pick a shitload of players. Like I'll end up with seven running backs and like seven wide receivers or something like that. Um so I'm deciding between Lamar Miller and Chris Hogan. And you know what? I'm also sticking to my guns on Hogan. We got Julian Edelman, who was um, – his, his appeal was denied. So he's going to be out for the first four games of the season. That's cool. So I took back-to-back -to -back Patriots, which I'm absolutely fine with. At 5-5, five, five, what's that in a 12-team league? That's pick 50 – 53, 55. Yeah. So Chris Hogan is ranked. People are going to say this is too high, but Chris Hogan's going to be ranked inside my top five. Ooh, you read my mind, show balls. Chris Hogan's going to be ranked inside my top 50 overall players. So I'm absolutely fine reaching for him up here. Um, I like him better than all these. I have him ranked better than all these wide receivers. And um, so yeah, you're going to end up with seven wide receivers, seven running backs. So you can just kind of choose at your will. You don't need to like pick based on starting draft positions. Um, what, what was I saying? What was I saying? I don't even remember. Uh, 
Um, right. So the tight end, you need to be able to separate yourself somewhere. And uh, quarterback position is too rich. There's too many good options. Whereas in the tight end position, there's too many bad options. So if you can get one of the elite options on a weekly basis, you're going to separate yourself and give yourself an advantage of like eight points per week. If that makes sense in a redraft league. So the smaller your league is, the more I want to push you to draft one of the higher tight ends. I would even reach a little bit further for a guy like Gronk or for a guy like Travis Kelsey for this year. Um, when it gets to bigger leagues, obviously it's harder to balance those skill positions in terms of running backs and wide receivers. So, you you know, you're not going to have elite guys um, in a 12 team league. I'm not going to be able to get three elite wide receivers or, or three elite running backs. You know what I mean? So, um, so it's not as important to stack up on the tight end position because not every you're going to be someone's going to be able to separate themselves through running backs and wide receivers. And uh, what else do we got here? So we're seeing a lot of guys go off the board. So we have like Nelson Aguilar and Marquise Goodwin. A little early for me um, when there are still guys like Ronald Jones and Sammy Watkins on the board. Um. And then we saw, when did Aaron Jones, Aaron Rodgers go? Uh, so we're seeing a lot of the guys that I like. So a lot of the guys that I talk up are going way earlier in this draft than, they, than I've seen in normal drafts. Like Emmanuel Sanders went very much earlier than uh, than I've seen him go in a draft. Um, What else do we got? What else? What else? What else? What else? So we had Aaron Rodgers go at 412, which is pick 48. And then Deshaun Watson at 59. Too early, man. Too early for these guys. Um, Jay Rudominer, too early for the quarterback position of, <clears throat> ah, shit, just disregard that text message. Um, ah, he sniped me on Sammy Watkins. Nice. Mark Ingram, Ronald Jones, um, Craig Olson. Cool. I got my eye on somebody. Hopefully you don't get sniped right now by Cho Balls. I don't really like any of the wide receivers here at value. I think uh, okay, you could take him for sure. I saw an interesting stat about Corey Davis. Um, so Corey Davis, my thing on Corey Davis is, first of all, let me make this pick. We're going to go with Jamal Williams here because just a couple hours ago, we heard the news that Aaron Jones is being suspended for the first two weeks of the season for, I guess it was um, illegal substance because he got arrested for the marijuana possession back a couple months ago. So, um, that was his punishment from that. He's going to miss the first two weeks, which gives Jamal Williams the opening to uh, be a featured back, which we saw him be down the stretch last year. He was getting over 20 touches a game down the stretch. So um, this gives him the opening. And the big, I mean, the big thing is this, like Aaron Jones, yes, he might come back and then get his role back. But, you know, we weren't sure how big the door was going to be for any of these running backs. And now Jamal Williams basically has the backfield for the first two games which gives him a huge advantage. And if he can play successfully, right, he's going to be running behind Aaron Rodgers now, which he didn't get to do last year. Now he's running behind Aaron Rodgers. If he can come out of the gate and run successfully and be, you know, effective those first two games, they're going to have no reason to change their game plan. So while I still think Aaron Jones is the superior running back, uh, this sets up Jamal Williams to possibly, you know, kind of blast out and have a, have a monster year because look at Mike McCarthy. You know, he's not going to want to take shit. He's not going to want to play a guy like Aaron Aaron Jones if he can't get his shit together. Um, so it's a big boost up for Jamal Williams, who now has pretty, pretty, pretty high upside given the uh, the chance that he just got here. So uh, I like Jamal Williams. He just obviously shot up my rankings given the Aaron Jones news. Um, it's very much like the Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara situation where Kamara is going to get the start. And a lot of people are like, yeah, Ingram's going to come back and be a top 15 running back. It's like, eh. Well, what if Kamara is doing really, 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 really well, which you could probably expect given how effective he was last year? Why would the Saints automatically be like, yep, nope, let's uh, let's lighten the workload on Kamara, even though he's given us three games of uh, 120 total yards? You know what I mean? So it's kind of like that in a poor man's sense, I guess. But um, interesting to me, the none the less. Uh, this makes Ty Montgomery a little more interesting to me as well. Not still not a guy I'm like reaching on or anything, but I like him a little more. Ooh, I would like Ronald Jones here at seven five if he fell. I think that's just a good value. Yep, Delaney Walker. There we go. You, you boys are learning. Y'all are learning. Wow, big tight end run there. So we had Evan Ingram, Jimmy Gr Ooh, ew, TJ, TJ, 
TJ, you watching my vids and you still take Jimmy Graham over Delaney Walker? I take that as fucking personal disrespect. Literally personal disrespect. So I'm gonna take Ronald Jones here at the seven five, which I think is a great deal. Um, guys, you gotta, you gotta, you know, listen, when, when you watch my videos, right, I'm going to hate on a lot of players, but I don't hate the players. I hate their ADP. You don't hate players. You hate ADP. Heard that on the, uh, the Roto Underworld podcast by Matt Kelly, which is a very good podcast. I suggest you listen to it. My top five podcasts article is going to be an exclusive article article in my draft guide, which is on sale now. And the first issue will be released in three days. If you're watching this on Friday, it's going to be Saturday, Sunday. Monday is going to be the – oh, Alan Hearns. Damn, you really went up there. Dude, these guys are sniping all my picks. God damn, y'all are good. You'll really be watching my videos, huh? Um, So, yeah, the draft guide releases in three days on July 9th. So make sure you grab that. It's going to be updated throughout the summer, but you want to get your hands on it ASAP, baby. Um, and inside that, yes, I will have my top five podcasts. Uh, exclusive article as well as a uh, big article in the fantasy football industry and then obviously you know stuff helping you for your actual draft and including my top 250 overall rankings positional rankings by tiers my top busts my sleepers my must draft guys key offseason edition dynasty rankings uh all this all of this good 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 shit so go grab that now it's on bigdogsfantasy.com it'll be linked below as well so don't fret if you just didn't listen to a word I said because I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't listen to me either. But um, that's where we're at. So we're, we're seeing a quarterback run. We're seeing a tight end run, which is perfectly fine by me. I will take all the skilled players I can right now because, listen, here's the thing. Even if you wait on quarterbacks in this league, I can grab quarterbacks with my last three picks, right? If I wait until there's 12 teams in this league, let's assume they all take two quarterbacks, um, right, and I'm, I'm I get – two of the top 15, and then one of the top 18. You're still looking at uh, a pairing of guys like – you're still going to be able to get like an Andrew Luck, a Matt Ryan, and then – oh, my God. You guys cannot be seeing these test messages that are popping up on my screen. Those are those are exclusive for me, not for your eyes. Um, shit. <laughs> And then, uh, sorry, what was I saying? Yes, yeah, so you're still going to get like an Andrew Luck, a Matt Ryan, who's a quarterback 15, and then your choice of like Winston, Derek Carr, Trubisky. And there's a good chance, like on a weekly basis, all you need for one of those three guys to do is be like top eight, and you're fine at quarterback. There's no reason to reach up to a Tom Brady or a Drew Brees or one of those guys in one of these early rounds when there's still a lot of skill players on the board. So um, that's my take on quarterbacks when it comes to best ball drafts. And that's especially true in smaller leagues, because that means the choices of of elite quarterbacks is even bigger. Oh, man, where the hell was I even at? See, now I'm not even looking anymore. Um, I guys, sorry, I didn't really prep for this pick, but I'm going to go. I'm going to go Randall Cobb. Um, hopefully he is the wide receiver, too, there. I'm kind of taking a, a bank on that and uh, take Take it to the bank. Plus, I need a wide receiver, I guess. I probably should have went Robert Woods there, but um, I have Randall Cobb ranked higher, so I'm okay with that pick. If he can win that wide receiver two role, we know that the wide receiver two role in the Packers um, offense has historically put up about, I think, I forget what the stat was on my Instagram. It was like 72 catches, almost 1,000 yards, and maybe eight touchdowns um, over since Aaron Rodgers has been the starter pretty much. So, uh, so much upside there with the wide receiver two position, and uh, yeah, I'm cool. With, I'm cool with Cobb there. Let me see what else I would have taken. Yeah, so like I was saying, guys, the smaller your league is too, um, the less you need to worry about quarterback. But the but the higher I reach up on tight end. I hope that makes sense for you. It's because the it's because the difference between like quarterback three and quarterback fifteen on a points per game basis is very small. The elite quarterbacks, unless you're getting like the number one or number two quarterback, which is very hard to predict on a year-to-year basis, um, you're not getting a huge point-per-game difference. So there's no point in reaching eight rounds earlier to get the QB4 as opposed to QB12, right? You know what I mean? Like there's not a huge difference between Drew Brees' statistics and maybe Matt Stafford or Ben Roethlisberger's statistics on a week-over-week basis. I mean, at the end of the year, you're looking at like a two points-per-game difference. But if you can grab a Travis Kelsey – compared to like a tight end two compared to tight end 10 or 12, you're looking at a monster difference, probably like seven to eight, maybe even more fantasy points per game difference. So that's where you're getting that advantage. Um, okay. So 
I mean, in the ninth round, I do like some of these quarterbacks, but I'm going to stick to my guns here. Stay away from these running backs, these wide receivers. Woo, man. Tight ends, nah. I'm good with tight ends. I don't think I'm looking for backups here quite yet. Kelvin Dez, Sterling Shepard. Man, you guys are sharp. We got some Sharpies in this league. I'm going to go with... Uh, I will go with Isaiah Crowell. He is a guy that's been gaining steam and getting a lot of buzz lately, and it's because he is taking over as the lead back in this Jets offense. So I believe we've seen the extent of Blau Powell in the Jets offense. I believe they have no intentions on using him as anything more than a scat back and a replacement level back when other people get hurt. Um, there were reports coming out that Elijah McGuire, I would actually take Elijah McGuire before I took Blau Powell for sure. Reports that he's probably going to play a big role in the third down roll. Um, he was pretty good as a rookie, too. He put over up, I think, over like 500, 600 total yards. He was used in the rushing game when Forte was hurt. He was using in the passing game. So I think it's going to be mostly the Crowell and Elijah McGuire show. Um, Crowell has proven that he can hold the load. He's also proven that he he's a capable pass catcher, right? He caught, I think, 40 balls a couple seasons ago, uh, paired up with Duke Johnson in Cleveland. So I think Crowell is a sneaky bet to – um, kind of hit 200 touches, probably 200 carries in that Jets offense. Um, so he's someone I'm okay getting this late in the draft. Uh, I think he was probably the best value I could have got on the board. Duke Johnson is a guy I'm, I'm not like, even though these, the, if you're going to be taking guys like a Duke Johnson or a Gio Bernard or James White, like this is the type of draft to do that in the best ball drafts because you don't actually have to choose who you're starting on a week to week basis. The software automatically chooses the best performers at each position on your team to start them. So, um, so you don't actually have to choose, you know, Duke Johnson to start on a given week. You'll just get his best weeks. However, I think Duke Johnson's ceiling is nowhere near as high as people are thinking it is, right? Like last year, he had a very high ceiling because he was getting so much work. But now they bring in Carlos Hyde and Nick Chubb, who I think are both better than Isaiah Crowell to begin with. But also, um, Carlos Hyde was very good in the passing game. Well, not very good, but he was very heavily utilized in the passing game. I just think I, I just think the three-headed monster approach is not going to be good for Duke Johnson's upside there. He's going to get less work than he did last season, um, and I already wasn't really a big fan of him last season, um, week over week, because I just I just hated choosing when I needed to start those kind of guys. Um, and you see what I mean? Like waiting on quarterbacks, guys. There's still Stafford, Roethlisberger, Luck, Mahomes sitting on the bench there, and. Uh, if I had if I had gone with a quarterback or something, then I'd be missing out on valuable skill positions, which I pretty badly need right now because all you guys are sniping me. Damn it! There goes Chris Carson, my boy. Kenny Galladay, very nice. Wide receiver, wide receiver. Okay, so I really want to know what's going on with Martavis Bryant. There were reports coming out the other day that um, there's supposedly going to be a Martavis Bryant suspension which would kind of make me like Jordy Nelson a little bit because I think he's going so undervalued that he might turn into a value play. Um, but I'm actually going to go with uh, Kelvin Benjamin here. And I just think, like, dude, I don't think Kelvin Benjamin's a good receiver whatsoever, but I just think Buffalo has basically nothing there. They have no one in the receiving category. Um, Kelvin Benjamin's not a guy who makes plays with the ball in his hands. He's not a guy who catches a lot of balls, but – He's going to be their main end zone target. Um, and I think that with, you know, with that offense, without having any weapons there, he's like, he, he's pretty much uh, uh, guaranteed probably if he's healthy, you know, hundred, 110, maybe 125 targets there as the wide receiver one. You got Zay Jones probably operating on the slot. I don't even know who else is on their team, to be honest with you, at wide receiver. Let me look it up. Three. Zay Jones, Andre Holmes. Yeah, this is a sad receiving group. Um, so, you know, Kelvin Benjamin is a guy that I just like based off of volume. I just like him a lot based off of volume. Uh, great pick there on uh, Latavius Murray, TJ. I like that pick a lot. And the reason being is, guys, if I, I don't advocate picking handcuffs, but if there is one handcuff that is – far and above beyond the rest of them, it's Latavius Murray. It's not even close. Latavius Murray is by far the best handcuff you can get this year because most hand, 99% of handcuffs, 
you don't you, you don't know 99 percent of handcuffs because when it when a featured back goes down for the most part you're not getting another featured back in his place you're getting a mix of three four different guys kind of contributing to the backfield now that will not be the case in minnesota if dalvin cook who is coming off his torn acl goes down again latavius murray is the three down featured back there that's why i like latavius murray even in a league like this he might have some standalone value just based on touchdowns i think he might take away a lot of um red zone looks uh, a lot of goal line carries from dalvin cook which also kind of makes me a little a little nervous about him um oh man i gotta like pay attention when this is going on i'm gonna go i love i'm going chris godwin just because the timer is about to run. Uh, I meant to go with Cameron Meredith, to be honest with you. But I went with Chris Godwin. Chris Godwin is, first of all, he's a god. Second, Chris Godwin is is an absolute animal. I'm going to show you Chris Godwin right now, player profiler. Chris Godwin is very, 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 very good. And he's one of my top sleeper wide receivers this year. Um, I think Sean Jackson just kind of needs to get out of the way there. Sean Jackson is, um, you know, he's on his way out. And I, I think that we just need to put Chris Chris Godwin in there, who was a third-round pick from Tampa Bay. He's in Tampa Bay right now. He's just 22 years old. Look at his measurables. 95th percentile spark athlete, 89th percentile speed score, 40-yard dash, burst score, agility, and catch radius, all 68th percentile. And above, college dominator rating, 68th percentile, breakout age, 77th percentile. Um, the thing I like about Chris Godwin, too, is he's not just like a raw – he is a very good athlete. He's just a, a very good raw talent. But he produced last year when given the chance, right? He was playing um, – there were a few games where he played where I think like Mike Evans or Deshaun – one of the one of the two were out or maybe even both of them were out, and he put up numbers. If you see on the bottom of the screen here, he had the one game where Mike Evans was out where he went um, – no, you can't be calling me right now, bro. He had the one game where um, – where Mike Evans was out in week 10 versus the Jets, and he caught five of 10 targets for 68. Um, and then towards the end of the season, you see that 568 game, three for 98, seven for 111 in their week 17 game, and a tutty. Guy who averaged 15.4 yards per reception, put up 525 receiving yards, guys. And he he was like barely involved through the first, you can see this, the first nine weeks of the season. So a really good, um, a really good rookie season for someone who didn't really play that much. And his his upside is very, very, very high. He's got good size, like 6'1", 210. It's going to be funny in a few years when uh, when Chris Godwin is fighting Mike Evans for those wide receiver one targets, man. Don't sleep on Chris Godwin. The The reports have been coming out that he's you know he's earned the right to start, but I don't really know what that means because I don't think they're going to use him out, outside above Deshaun Jackson. But I think uh, his, play, his play time will start evolving – as the season goes by, and if he starts getting starter snaps, I think he has he's capable of some big, 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 big gains. Okay, so my man's Anthony Miller. Now there's a little bit of QB run, so now is probably when I would start looking at a quarterback. One of my one of my first quarterbacks, as you can see, I wait till the twelfth round, and I still have my choice of Big Ben, Matt Ryan, Marks Mariota, Dak Prescott, who I think is is being super. How is Dak Prescott going behind Alex Smith now? That's super disrespect, man. That is super disrespect, man. Happy uh, July. Oh, actually, never mind. I'm filming this prior to July 4th. So filming this on Tuesday night. I'll have it up for Friday. So if you're what? Oh, there goes Big Ben, you little schmuck. Um, if you if you um, watch this on Friday and any of the shit I'm saying right now is irrelevant, that means because I, I filmed it on Tuesday, right? So uh, anything that happens between Tuesday and Friday is obviously not going to go into my analysis for this video. And that always happens in my mock drafts. Like I, I last mock draft, I drafted Jameis Winston, and then he got suspended. But I did the mock draft prior to that, and then I put it up, and everyone was like, "Oh, Jameis Winston!" I'm like, "Bro, like, like, how dumb do you think I am?" I mean, I know I'm pretty dumb, but like, grow up. All right, so I'm gonna grab my first quarterback because there's about there's a run of quarterbacks there. I'll go with Matt Ryan. Absolutely uh, enamored with Matt Ryan as a late round quarterback option this year. Uh, his touchdown percentage was very low last year, which is a telling factor in uh, a quarterback's kind of progression or regression for the following year. And this offense was very good. 
um, top three in yards per play, yards per drive, time of possession per drive. They just couldn't finish. They were very bad in the red zone historically. Matt Ryan's still graded as a very, very high-end quarterback per pro football focus last year. So his play didn't actually fall off whatsoever. So I, I'm still really liking Matt Ryan as a quarterback to bounce back in 2018, which is why I'm super high on Devonta Freeman too, because if he gets, um, if this offense gets more scores, that's going to benefit him because he's their main goal line back. He's their main goal line bike. Oh man, we are hurting at the, uh, the rest of the positions, huh? I might grab another quarterback here to be, to be quite frank with you. In my humble ass opinion. These drafts go really quick, especially like I don't really get to focus during the drafts because I'm just talking to you guys. It's actually amazing how good I've got, how good I've gotten at just talking straight to a camera for like an hour straight about nothing but fantasy football. The shit just, I don't even think about these things. They just spews out of my fucking mouth. It's actually sickening. It's actually disgusting when I really think about it, but it's neither here nor there. Neither here nor here. Um, so, yeah, I don't really think about the shit. I just talk to you guys, and then my turn pops up, and I'm like, oh, fuck, I have to pick now. That sucks. Um, so we have, what, five running backs, five receivers, one tight end, one quarterback. Um, I'm going to wait on tight end probably still because I don't see a lot of value in picking a guy like Njoku, Ebron, Clay over waiting six rounds and getting a guy like Ben Watson, who I bet will have a much better year than Eric Ebron, who I bet – Ben Watson basically has the same kind of ceiling floor as Njoku, I think, because there's so many mouths to feed with Njoku. Um, and Ben Watson is a guy that um, went off a couple of years ago when he was with the Saints and he reunites there. So um, I'm liking this real quick. So we had Matt Ryan. Um, I'm going to go with Dak Prescott here. Because Actually, let me look at the skill. Play. I don't even have time to look at the skill players. Gosh, darn it. So I'm going to go with Dak. Um, Dak's, you know, Dak's floor is very good because of his rushing upside. And I know that um, last year, something bad happened last year with Dak. I'm not even sure how to explain it, but I guess it was a mixture of not having Zeke and not having their offensive line at full strength. But guys, he's had six rushing touchdowns in each of his first two years. He's had at least 282 rushing yards, which is a great floor. Um, obviously, the pass attempt volume is not going to be there, but this is a... Uh, this is a four point per passing touchdown league, which makes rushing quarterbacks a little bit more valuable, right? Because their touchdowns and their rushing yards are more valuable than the regular, um, than leagues where it'd be like two quarterbacks or, or six point per passing touchdown. So I like Dak, man. I, I think he's getting disrespected in fantasy circles because he's been so good for the last two years up until the last half of last year. Um, but I think he has a, a big enough sample size to expect, uh, at least a minimal bounce back. So I like Dak as my QB two here later. Um, other guys I'm targeting right now. No, 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 no. I might, I might grab Jerome Allison. I like grabbing what I've been doing a lot is, uh, I haven't been getting a lot of Devonta Adams in these leagues. I think it's just the way I've, I've ended up my, my draft spots have ended up. Um, I've been grabbing a lot of Randall Cobb and a lot of Geronimo Allison together on the same team because, you know, as we know, the wide receiver two is very valuable. The wide receiver three could be valuable as well, but we don't know who those guys really are going to be. And I would almost guarantee that, you know, one of these two guys, either Allison or Randall Cobb, is going to be the wide receiver two here. So um, getting them both really late, I think I got Cobb in, what, the ninth round, and then Geronimo Allison, if I get him here, it would be the 14th round. So praying the price for those two guys, for someone who's probably going to put up 900 yards and six to seven touchdowns, considering Rodgers is a lock for 35 touchdowns, you give 12 of them to Devonta Adams, you give six to seven of them to Jimmy Graham, you still have a shitload of touchdowns left over for the rest of the receiving core. Um, so I, I really like grabbing I, I really like that combo of grabbing uh Allison and Randall Cobb in these leagues because again you don't actually have to choose which one of them is gonna break out. Uh there's not a lot of other wide receivers I really like um at value here. I like Keelan Cole. He's ah, there goes Geronimo. If I had to pick one wide receiver out of the Jacksonville group to like, I I kind of feel like it's Keelan Cole. I don't know. Oh, there goes Benjamin Watson, man. Y'all are sniping all my damn picks. I swear, none of these guys are ever picked in the drafts that I'm in. It's crazy. Case Keenum, uh, I'm not going to go with another quarterback right now. Probably going to go two quarterbacks and two tight ends when all is said and done. Um, what running backs do we like? Well, they all suck, but I will give you one guy that I actually like here. And it is Jordan Wilkins. 
Wilkins is a guy who the Colts front office is saying that reminds them of Matt Forte. He is a bigger back. He's not exciting, um, but he's a bigger back with size. And we just saw Robert Turbin get suspended for the first four games of the season. I think that pretty much gives him um, the sense of being a non-factor in 2018 for the fantasy football season. Then we look at uh, what else they have there. They have Naeem Hines, who is never going to be the feature back. He's just going to be a playmaker. A guy who um, – we got fireworks going on? What's up? That might actually be rain. I don't even know. Um, Naeem Hines, who is a smaller back. If anything, he's just going to be a, a big-time playmaker and catch a lot of passes. Then you have Marlon Mack, who – I mean, listen, at this point, like Marlon Mack is missing the entire offseason with shoulder surgery. Uh, he's also a pick from the previous kind of regime or head coaching tree. Uh, he's a boom-bust guy who – had a lot of big plays, but he had like the highest percentage of running back plays go for zero or negative yards. So uh, a lot of skepticism on whether or not he can actually be the guy there. And if you have to choose one of them, it's like I would rather take Wilkins 10 rounds later than Marlon. I'm mean, not really getting him 10 rounds later, but getting him what, like seven rounds, 70 picks later than Marlon Mack. And at this point, like I said, Marlon Mack has missed the whole offseason, um, and they're putting in a new offense, so that's something he's not going to know. Um, or he's not going to – it's not that he's not going to know, but he hasn't been able to practice it. So he's missed, like, the entire offseason with a shoulder injury, which gives reps to – now it's just basically Jordan Wilkins and Naeem Hines because Robert Turbin is suspended, and I'm, I'm doubting they're going to give him a lot of first-team reps. So uh, I like Wilkins a lot as a pretty deep sleeper, as someone who can emerge and get a lot of touches in this Colts backfield. So I have six running backs. I have five wide receivers. Uh, we have 15, 16, 17, so four picks left. Like I said, I'm probably going to stick with two quarterbacks. So I have my two. I need another tight end. I'm going to wait on that because I'd be happy getting like a Ricky Seals Jones at the end. Um, actually, I guess you guys have already seen my tight end breakout video, which had Ricky Seals Jones in there with, uh, with Sam Bradford at Q. I like the idea of Ricky Seals Jones kind of breaking out this year. I'm not going to get into it because most of you guys have probably already heard my spiel on it. So I'm going to look at wide receivers because I only have five of them right now. Corey Coleman, Keensey, Numa. Dude, I kind of like Keensey. He would, I was like really, really high in him coming into last year before his injury. I don't know how he's going to look now, though. I might draft Calvin Johnson just for the fuck of it. Tony Callaway. Uh, God, these drafts are the worst. Um, I'm going to go with Keelan Cole. I don't know why, but I think if there – I was watching some film. Uh, Matt Waldman was putting up his – puts up these RSPs. If you don't follow Matt Waldman on Twitter, I would do that. He does, like, these video breakdowns where he looks at specific players and goes, like – he looks at some of their plays and, and just, like, different game logs and different game films of players. <laughs> um looks at game logs of different players, and uh, and he was breaking down Keelan Cole. And Keelan Cole looked really, really good last year uh, at the film that I'm seeing. And, uh, you know, I know Jacksonville is – the receiving core is so – this is actually – that he actually might have been this pick right here, Keelan Cole. This might have been the first Jacksonville wide receiver I have taken in any best ball draft this summer. Um. But I don't know. The, the video that Matt Wallman put up just really intrigued me for some reason. Really really, uh, really got me hard there. So I, I don't know. Dante Moncrief is probably just going to be a goal line guy. We have D.D. Westbrook, who kind of came out last year. Marquise Lee, I think, is going to be overtaken. I don't think he's a good receiver at all, to be honest with you. Um, DJ Chark was their second-round pick, but he's more of just a long, lean, deep kind of guy. I think Keelan Cole is like a, a much better possession receiver than the other guys. So if there's one if there's one that I have to take a guess on that would emerge this year, it would be Keelan Cole or maybe Didi, but I like Cole. We're gonna go. So if Ricky Seals drops to me. I'll grab him here. Otherwise, we're looking at another two running backs and wide receivers. When I get down to this part in the draft, um. Actually, I don't really have a specific strategy. One guy I'm kind of liking a little bit more and more is Rod Smith, who's kind of fallen to the wayside. But my thinking is this. Zeke, I, like I said, I think Zeke is in line to get over – there goes Ricky. They're over like 400 
touches, probably closer to 450 touches, which gives him a higher likelihood to get hurt or get injured, right? So who is his backup? A lot of people think it's Bo Scarborough. I don't think that's the case at all. I think Rod Smith is a guy who is, one, built like um, – he, he's built to be a, a workhorse. And he showed three-down capability last year without Zeke. He caught a lot of passes, and he had four straight games with a rushing touchdown. I'm going to bring this up for you guys, too. If you're watching – if you're listening to this, like, via podcast, then uh, a lot of the times I put up images or charts or something – on the YouTube, so I'd go check that out if I were you. Look at Rod Smith, 6'3", 225 pounds. He's not fast or anything like that, but he is built to take on a big workload. And like I said, last year, look, he had a four-catch game, a five-catch game, a three-catch game, a three-catch game, five for 113. And then he had that four touchdown, four games in a row with a rushing touchdown as well as a receiving touchdown in that span. So five touchdowns in a four-game span. If something were to happen to Zeke, I think they trust Rod Smith, and I think he is the person who benefits the most in that backfield, not Bo Scarborough. So Rod Smith is a guy that I'm kind of taking a liking to, but I'm pretty sure I won't have to pick him before the last round, so I'll look elsewhere for now. Um, Probably take another wide. Oh, no, I'm going to need to grab a tight end. People really like Charles Clay this year. It's kind of disgusting, actually. I'm actually going to take him only because he's the only bona fide starter left here. Ew, that's so gross. I have two Buffalo pass catchers. I'm upset. 50,000 on my head is disrespect. Yo, don't let Drake Scorpion album dropping. The oh, fuck's on the phone, right? Someone just texted him, or someone just tweeted at me. Someone that's in here, Nick, uh, it's Nicky Scans, I guess. He's like, you just took Hogan from me. I'm in drafts. So I was like, yeah, I'm getting sniped left and right over here. It's like you guys fucking listen to my channel or something. Um, forget the fuck I was saying. Oh, uh, they sniped three tight ends in a row. Oh no, I already took my tight end, so I took. I got Charles Clay. Cool. Um. I kind of like a guy like Michael Wallace here, Michael. John Brown should be the second wide receiver there. Cortland Sun, eh. Uh, I'm going to go with Mike Wallace here because, I, I mean, I kind of see him playing that Torrey Smith role. And Torrey Smith had a couple games last year where he caught like 50-yard touchdowns. Um, and if you're, I don't know, if you're going to put up a couple of those weeks, right, where you catch a 40-yard touchdown or a 50-yard touchdown, you're probably going to be within like the top, 20 or top 15 fantasy wide receiver. So I like to take a guy like Mike Wallace, who I kind of just think slips right into what Torrey Smith did for the offense last year. And if he can have a couple big games or a couple big plays for me, he will be worth it in the 17th round. Um, that kind of goes the same with Torrey Smith going to Carolina as well, because I'll have a couple of those games. Same thing with the Ted Ginn here. I just, I picked Mike Wallace over Ted Ginn because I'm not actually sure what Ted Ginn's role is going to be in New Orleans now that Cameron Meredith is there. They have Michael Thomas. They took Traquan Smith. Um, so I'm not really sure Ted Ginn is still going to operate as that deep guy there. Um, but I mean, it's very possible. I just like Mike Wallace cause I think he's going to fit exactly in where Torrey Smith was. And then we have what one, one pick left. Yeah. I'll probably take Ro- Roger Roddy Smith. As long as he's available. Imagine someone sniping him right now. I'd be pretty close. I'll take them. No, right. Uh, I'm upset. Oh, that's what I was going to say. Don't let uh, Drake dropping Scorpion dis- distract you from the fact that Pusha T absolutely fucking ossified Drake. That that diss song, Story of Adnan, was like the greatest thing that ever happened. I love that song. I still listen to the gym every day. I'm about to put it on right now. It sucks that it's not on Spotify. Got to put it on SoundCloud. That shit makes me fucking infuriated. Fear. Oh, yes. Drug dealing aside, 
goes right in the side. Let's have a heart to heart about your pride. Even though you're multi, I see that your soul don't look alive. The M's count different when baby divides the pie. Wait, be mother. But honest, this should be your world. My verses, I'm selfish. I want all of the curses. I'm rebooking the churches. Me versus rehearses. If they knew, the only ones I chase are two ghosts. Still giving you classics. That's the only thing that dates me. OVO 40 hunched over like he 80. Tick, 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 how much time you got? That man is six, six, six. I got the devil flow. Six, six, six. Uh, that was like the coldest line of all time. I know it's fucked up, but uh, push. I get the goosebumps listening to that shiz. Come on, Raji. Rodder Smith. Who do we see going? Man, why are you going to pick Dallas Godard right now? Someone picked Hunter Henry. He must have timed out. Epic. How much time you got? That man is six, six, six. You know what I... Eh, actually, I do hate that. Never mind. About to say something ignorant. I should probably take a third quarterback, to be honest, but I ain't going to do it to him. I ain't going to do it to him, bro. ain't going to finna do it to him. It's my pick on the clock. How much time he got? That man is six, six, six. I got the devil flow, ninja. Six, six, six. Who did I say? I say? Oh, Roger. Roddy. All right, so that is my squad right here on the right. Matt Ryan, Dak, and those are the reasons I wait on quarterback. I waited till the 12th round to get my quarterbacks, Matt Ryan and Dak, and I think you're going to get plenty of top 10 weeks between the two of those guys, uh, between Dak's rushing upside and Matt Ryan's throwing passing floor. Um, I expect good positive um, progression. I know people get angry when I say Potter's positive regression, so we're going to go positive progression from now on. Um then we have at running back. My running backs are kind of weak. Uh, LaShawn McCoy, Sony Michelle, Jamal Williams, Ronald Jones. But I do like the fact that McCoy is uh, slept on, and I was able to kind of grab Kelsey with McCoy as my RB1. Michelle is a guy who I still see as, despite the reports of Rex Burkhead being the goal line guy, I still see Michelle built really well, like 220 pounds of being um, – Someone who has 12 touchdown upside, they're going to use him heavily. Jamal Williams now with Aaron Jones out now has a great upside there um, to become an RB1 or an RB2 this year because they'll get the first crack at it. Ronald Jones is, a, is an upside play. Um, I'm definitely not banking on him breaking out for me or anything, but I do like what he brings to the table as a scorcher. And my wide receivers, I like them. Brown, Hogan, Cobb. Some upside, some downside. I didn't get Geronimo, did I? But Travis Kelsey, I really like that. It's going to give me a weekly advantage at the position, which is super underrated. Um, but overall, yeah, guys, this is it. If you want to get a $3 free entry into a draft, uh, draft, draft, I can't even say a draft draft because the, the name of the place is draft. So go draft.com, use promo code BDGE. And once you sign up, guys, I'm going to be starting these leagues all the time. So if you follow me on Twitter, uh, I'll tweet out, like, guys, I'm starting a best ball draft. Just go join, and you'll be able to get in there because I'll drop the link. And then I'll uh, – and, th and that's really it. So if you enjoy the video, hit me with that thumbs up. I hope you had a good 4th of July. Have a fantastic weekend. Be safe out there. Don't do too many drugs. Stick to the good kinds, as I always say. Don't drink too much. And if you do, make sure it's tequila. But for real, stay safe this weekend. Buy my damn draft guide because it's coming out on Monday, and I can't wait to give it to you all. And, uh, and that's it, man. I'll talk to you all later. Thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you're new.